Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So we got another uh, edition of Meatloaf here. So a couple things going on. Um, we're going to look at some uh, some aprons, a couple of styles of aprons. Um, I just bought a, a new flavor, and uh, I, I'm going to trot out an, an old ancient one that I uh, that I found the other day. Um, then we're going to. Uh, I got a mystery tool to show you guys, uh, so you guys can guess it. Um, a mystery tool. Um, it's a part of a it's a part of a pretty common machine uh, that we'll take a look at, and uh, you guys will get a look at that. Um, and then there's a um, oh, I got uh, this level. Uh, I was poking around in some old stuff, and uh, um, I found this uh, this level that I had been looking for uh, when we were talking about levels a couple months ago. So uh, I found that we'll trot that thing out and take a look at it and. Uh, uh, Ask for some uh, some viewer help doing a little research on what uh, uh, what that level was actually used for. Um, so I think it's a military level. So uh, it probably had some very specific purpose. So uh, anyway, let's uh, let's get a one type of apron on, and uh, we'll go look at some other aprons and uh, and some other tools and stuff, and uh, let's get cracking. Okay, so what we got here is we got these uh, these two aprons here. Uh, and these are two different manufacturers. So let's open these up. I'll we'll take a look at them. This is the, the one I just got here. Um, and this is made by Dickies, which is a well-known uh, um, workwear purveyor. And there's the logo there. They got the little red logo. And then this one here is my kind of standard one that I've been using for quite a few years. And it's a Ben Davis. And it's got the little monkey on it here. I, I joke around and uh, tell people, I said, hey, these, are, uh, these guys are great. Uh, they'll even put my picture on, uh, on, on my apron. So <laughs> anyway, uh, so basically kind of the same. Um, you can see it's a little bit different. This comes up a little higher. Um, the, the Dickies has grommets. So, and loose ties. Now, I didn't like the ties that came with it. They were these just cotton, crappy ties. So I used some different cord here um, and, uh, and made the ties myself. Um, general complaint with both models is these dinky ass uh, hand pockets. I mean, look at that. I mean, it just, you can't even barely put your hand in there. And then these, you know, look at that. That's these are better suited to Barbie's pants or something, I don't know. Um, it's got the flap pocket here, which I like. This is nice if you're bending over, your stuff doesn't fall out of your pocket. Um, and then another general complaint is the length of these pockets is, is a, little bit, uh, a little bit shallow. So let me grab something. So when you put something in here, okay, it's bottoming out in the pocket, and I'm, uh, I'm nowhere near the top of the clip here, so it's just barely on there, okay? So to me, you know, the pocket clip should, should be buried, basically, okay? Um, so those need to be a half inch longer, at least. Same thing here, this is a little shallow. Let's see, yeah, about a half inch shallow. Okay, now these shrink up a little bit, so they may start out pretty good, but uh, they kind of shrink up. So, you know, if I was modifying these, I would make these pockets uh, an, inch, an inch deeper and uh, an inch and a half wider or something like that, uh, uh, just out of general, general purpose. This has got the sim a similar problem, although not quite so bad. This is only a quarter inch. Now these will soften up too in use and and be better, but uh, still a little shallow there. So the major difference between these is the f this has fixed ties attached to it. Let's let's just flip these over, and you guys can get a look at that. These have fixed ties, and this has you know add your own ties. Now. To me, this is one of the key elements of, uh, of how the apron works. Okay, now this one's attached here. 
and then I attached it here with a little figure figure eight knot. Um, what you don't want is you don't want a neck loop, okay? These things just hang on your neck and they're just terrible, right? So what you want is you want that load to get transferred to your back, okay? And that's that's why these this type of tie is really the, the hot setup. Um, honestly, I think I I prefer these fixed ones here, no grommets. Although this gives you some options uh, for adjusting these. Every once in a while, I'll get one of these where this is so this is sewn in the in the wrong place. It's down too far, and then these kind of come apart and uh, slide off your shoulder. So every once in a while, I get one that's like that, and I have to stitch it up or whatever. I've never had one of these joints fail actually, believe it or not. Um, so, but these are completely serviceable here. This is a nice denim and, uh, and they look pretty good. Once again, that's Dickies and uh, this is uh, Ben Davis. So, uh, I don't know, what else can I say about aprons, right? Um, wear an apron, saves your clothes. Thanks for watching. Speaking of aprons, uh, I was going through my uh, my old toolbox and I found this thing here. This is something that I made long, long, long time ago when I did uh, uh, when I was doing sheet metal work for a living. And uh, this is more of a kilt, kind of a leather kilt than a, than an apron. Um, and the reason that I made this, and this thing's just saturated with oil still to this day, although it's not wet with oil, it's absorbed in there. Um, the steel that we did a lot of shearing of uh, pickled and oiled uh, steel. So this would, uh, it was hot rolled that had been pickled in acid and then uh, run through an oil bath to keep it from rusting. Um, anyway, we did a lot of shearing of that. Well, what happens is, you know, you're at the shear and let's just pretend this is the sheet metal here. This edge is hanging over. So you're, you're actually kind of bumping it around on the shear or the press break or whatever kind of with this area. Well, all my pants were filthy and then sliced along that area, right, from these burrs. So, um, um, you know, there's not much that stands up to it. Well, leather will stand up to it. So uh, uh, I made this little leather kilt and the idea was, <laughs> and I think I was skinnier then. <laughs> In fact, I know I was skinnier then. Come around, there we go. And I got a, I got this little holster on the side here too. Anyway, so the idea was, you know, I used to have my tape measure clipped right here. Now, um, you know, I'm moving this stuff around and I got a leather surface here. So it would save my pants uh, from doing that. So it's kind of a, a leather kilt. And then, you know, this protects the top area of your pants. Uh, from welt spatter and stuff like that, and a place to clip your uh, clip your tape measure. So somebody was asking about a, um, you know machinist kilt or a, a, you know a welder's kilt or something like that. But there's a there's an example of a, an old one. So that was made in uh, that would have been 80, 1984. So it was before the uh, before the Challenger uh, uh, space shuttle accident. So uh, that was '86, I think. So this was probably '80, '84, somewhere in there. Uh, I made this thing. Uh, um, anyway, still have it. I, it's got sentimental value. I don't want to. I don't want to get rid of it. It's pretty cool still, and it's got a a patina that that you just can't fake, right? <laughs> this was a repair here. It blew out in the corner here, so I re, uh, redid it with uh, a patch and some uh, and some rivets there. So anyway, thought you guys might like that uh, uh, sheet metal uh, worker's kilt. Okay, so here's the uh, the mystery tool or the mystery article that you guys uh, might be in, <laughs> keen on looking at, and they come in this little uh, this little uh, plastic box here. Um, so we're going to pop those out. These are your first look at them. So uh, your first clue is that uh, um, they are they need to be protected, um, and um, 
you know, there's some value to them so that they want to arrive in good shape. So let's pop one out here. Let's pop two of them out. Okay, box, we'll set that aside. All right, so general dim dimensions, uh, they're about an inch in diameter, 25 millimeters in diameter. Now these are used, just so you know, um, and they're about uh, 800 thousandths long, 20 millimeters long, something like that, okay? And then they have a uh, 10 millimeter hole through the inside, okay? All right, they round it on the bottom. Now, uh, I, I will tell you that this scoring on the outside of this is from uh, how they are used, okay? Now you can see that they have a kind of uh, tooth pattern here, uh, and these actually will register together nicely, although in operation they're not used uh, together like this, okay? Um, what else? Uh, they're precision ground. Um, and um, they're heavy, so uh, they're actually made out of solid carbide. So, um, and that might be another clue for some folks too. Uh, so there's no there's no sharp edges on this, so it's not a cutting tool. So I'll give you that clue also. All right. So anyway, that's uh, that's the mystery tool. If you think you know what that is, uh, throw it up on the comments. And uh, I'll, I'll, let it, I'll let the comments ride for a couple of days on that and uh, before I announce, or maybe I'll announce it on the, uh, the next uh, meatloaf, uh, uh, who got those answers right. Um, anyway, kind of a specialized piece. Uh, um, it's, uh, um, there'll be a few people that know what those are though. So, okay. All right, let's put them away. Weep. Oops. Boop. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, so I was poking around at some uh, some stuff, and uh, uh, I was looking for this a while back when we were talking about uh, precision levels. And this is uh, one that uh, my friend, uh, my toolmaker buddy Charlie, gave me. Um, and I don't think I showed this before, but uh, this is a another precision level here. You know, and the giveaway is uh, that it's got a lot of graduations and. Uh, uh, and it's got a long bubble that's typically uh, uh, indicative of a, a sensitive level. Um, anyway, this this is military, I believe. It's got this OD green thing here, and it just has that look. Um, interestingly, there's part numbers on all the bits here. The barrel, uh, these end caps have different part numbers. This sleeve. Um, down in the bottom down there it says DC3 down there so I don't know how this was used it has a, these are spherical here these end fittings here and this looks like it has some kind of retention uh, um, you know whatever housing this went in it had some kind of re retention feature so uh, it's 8 inches long 200 millimeters um, it's approximately uh, um, inch and three eighths, you know, it's about 38 millimeters in diameter, something like that. This appears to be stainless steel. Um, this is brass. This OD part is brass, I believe. Um, and then more stainless in here. Now, what I'm thinking is this might make a good uh, basis for a precision level project where we actually make a uh, a frame uh, and with a very flat bottom on it and mount this in here and you know make ourselves a nice big level. Um, so anyway uh, some of you web crawlers out there uh, or military buffs might know what this is for. Um, so if you if you do know what this came off of or what it was used for post a picture or a link to an article um, guesses are okay, but uh, they're just guesses, okay? What I would like to see is, uh, is how this was used. Is it part of a, uh, a gun site or, uh, you know, I, I have no idea. And um, so maybe uh, um, if somebody can root that out, that would be kind of cool to, uh, to understand how this was used before I go taking it apart because well, I don't know. Maybe maybe we just use this housing. This is a nice protective housing that protects the uh, 
the precision vial there pretty well. Um, and maybe we would just incorporate that into the design. So uh, anyway, I thought you guys would get a kick out of that. And uh, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty sensitive here. You know, I'm just picking it up a teeny bit here. Yeah, I, I don't know. We could uh, we could test it, you know, by putting some shim, blah, blah, some shim stock under it, <clears throat> and to get an idea of uh, what kind of sensitivity it has. I think we did that on the level before, but this might make a good project later on. Anyway, I thought you guys would get a kick out of that and uh, looking at that thing. Um, yeah. It's cut away, this is cool, you, it's cut away so you can get your fingers in there to rotate that. And then, uh, you know, you got a full clear view of that, so uh, it's, it's pretty nicely made. Anyway, thanks for watching. Okay, this one's for Adam here. Um, this is my copy of the Complete Practical Machinist by Rose. Um, what's interesting though is uh, this is the 19th edition, okay? And uh, I think Adam said he had a second edition. Um, this one is really old. Um, and in fact, in the beginning, there's a... Uh, so this is a uh, 1899 printing, okay? And it's the 19th edition, so I'm not really clear on what that is. And then some guy had his name written in pencil in here. Uh, the date is 3... Um, 3-3-1900, okay, and then uh, there's a preface by the author, author uh, that's from um, 1894, and yeah, and the copyright here is 1894 by Joshua Rose, so they must have re-released it, um, a different printing of it or something like that, um, this one's pretty, pretty hammered here, uh, but it's cool, it's a cool book, and so we'll show some of the pictures. These are uh, drawings and lithographs in here, which are kind of neat. There's a, uh, a spring tool. We've been talking about those. And they inserted a block of wood in there. And there's another version of it. And I, I just accidentally landed on that. And that's the kind of stuff that's in here. Uh, Adam talked about some of the tools. So they, these are planar tools here that are behind, the edges behind the center line there. And you can see, they got a little diagram of that. Like I said, pure luck that I landed on this page. Um, there's all kinds of neat stuff in here. But it's pretty, it's pretty dated and pretty old. And this Julius, and I can't quite read the name there upside down, he stamped his name in the book. You know, he probably paid, um, you know, a day's wages or something for the book, you know, uh, uh, back then. So the, the books were very valuable. These were the only sources of, uh, you know, no internet back then, boys. Uh, you, you had to buy books and read them, actually. <laughs> now you can just sit down and watch videos. Uh, thread chasers, all kinds of, all kinds of neat stuff. Um, so let's flip to the back here. Just kind of scan through it here. Chisels, taps, counter bores. Uh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Oh, some kind of sweep tool here, uh, cylinder boring, reamers, chuck fixtures. Anyway, kind of a neat book, and you know, uh, uh, it's it's well known that I collect books, so uh, this is just something that's been in my collection for a while. Now I have this, I have this flag here. Uh, let me flip it around and see what the deal is. Oh, okay, so this is a. Uh, this is, uh, I flagged this, I don't know, all my books pretty much have flags in them, but this is, uh, I flagged it because I was looking at um, multiple start threads here for some reason, and uh, um, I wanted, I don't know what I was looking for, Gear, gearbox settings. Anyway, it's a cool old book. If you see a copy of it, uh, pick it up, because it ain't printed anymore. Let's see what's in the back here, anything in the back? Oh, this guy stamped the hell out of this. What, what was his name, anyway? Julius Garretts. And it looks like several people owned this book, and it originally came from King Brothers Books uh, from uh, 4th Street in San Francisco. So, anyway, thanks for looking.